Hey everyone, so continuing with my mall directory app example, this video I'm going to take a step back and explain those CRUD API endpoints for you that I allowed Xano to automatically generate for me during the jumpstart process. Once again, I want to highlight how amazing this is that Xano does this for us right away because if you don't know how to you know, construct and build your own API endpoints, this can take you a lot of time a lot of head scratching and be quite frustrating. So remember, the API is what what helps our front end communicate uh, with our back end. So anytime there is a command from the front end, the API is gonna process that information, go to the back end, go to the database, find exactly what's needed, and then return it to the front end in a readable fashion that makes sense. So APIs are super important for our applications. Um, so, in order to get there, I can either hit go to APIs here on the dashboard or I can click on this uh, nav bar icon right here that says API. And when I open up here, we see that there is this API group called public. And this is because APIs are uh, put into groups. Use cases for that might be a public versus a private API group. Additionally, maybe uh, if you want different versions of your APIs as you uh, build out and update your application. So I'm going to go ahead and hit explore. The way we can see here are all those CRUD API endpoints that Xano uh, automatically generated for us for each one of my uh, database tables. So let's start it out with the C in CRUD which is create. So think of it like create a new record or posting a new record, adding a new record. So create is going to correspond with this green verb post right here and it's going to say add stores record. Notice there's two post verbs. So this one on the bottom actually says edit stores record and that's going to correspond with update which we'll talk about very soon. Um, so in order to create we want this top one that says add stores record. So I'm going to click into here and we will see the anatomy of this API endpoint and all API endpoints have this same uh, layout which is or flow, if you will, which is first input, so the information needed for the API to do its, its command. Um, the function stack, which is the actual inner workings of the API endpoint, what it's actually doing, and the response, something optional to get back based on whatever that, that command was. So that's the basic flow. Here in this post or create command, we can see in order to create a new record or add a new record, we're going to need the name of the store, the description of the store, the location, and right here in the function stack that inner working, it's adding a record, and then the response is going to be um, that new store record. So I can just show you real quick how to do this in Xano. There's a run and debug button here on the top right, and when I open this up, a new window pops open, and we see right here uh, this kind of notation, which is a JSON object, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And all you really need to know is that this JSON object is the way that an API and a database communicate with each other. It's just the common language so they can do uh, the appropriate handshake of knowledge. So <clears throat> in order to add to these inputs to create a new record, first I'm going to need a name of the new store. So uh, let's say there is a Foot Locker that just opened up in, in my mall, and the description will be uh, its footwear. And the location, let's say it is uh, Floor 1 and Unit B, so it's right next to that Apple Store that was 1A. Okay, and something else I want to point out is when you have these uh, JSON objects, you see these quotation marks. You're going to want to put uh, my input values in between those quotation marks so that it can be read correctly. Okay, so once I have that, I can just go ahead and hit run, and we'll see that Xano says it was a success, and we get this new result, which is also um, you know, in these brackets here, similar to uh, that JSON object, and we have a new ID was created for, um, the timestamp is encoded, and then we have the name which I inputted, the description, and the location, and I just want to show you how that worked in the database. So if I go back to my database tables and into my stores, here is that new record. So like we said, ID 4, Foot Locker, Footwear, 1B. 
So I'm going to go back to my API page, and now I want to talk to you about the uh, read command, which is going to correspond with this blue verb get. Um, so we can do this in two ways. We can get all the store records, which you see at the bottom here, or we can get a specific store record, which we'll need to know the ID, and that's why you see that ID right there. So I'm actually going to show you how to just get all the store records, because um, it's very easy. So when I open up this API endpoint, here's that same anatomy, but let's look. There's no inputs that exist. That's because we actually don't need any information just to pull all the records. We don't need any inputs. Uh, the function stack is just to query all records, so it's going to get all those records uh, from the stores database table, and the response will be all those records. So if I go to run and debug, we can see that there's uh, no information needed for this input. These brackets are just closed. Um, so I can just go ahead and hit run this. And here are all four of my stores in my mall, uh, their description and the location. So that's obviously a very powerful um, API endpoint to use. So I'm going to go back again. And now we're going to talk about the update command, which remember, update uh, also corresponds with the green verb post, just like create. But there's two different post commands. So there's that add stores record, which is for create. And then there's that post edit stores record, which is going to be for update, which we're going to use right now. So when I click into here, uh, we'll notice that this looks a little different than the create API endpoint because in the inputs, we have this ID integer. That's because the API needs to know which specific record, remember which row to go to in order to edit or update uh, that specific record. And then in the function stack, we're editing the record and the response is going to be that updated record. So let's say um, my new store Foot Locker uh, moved into the first floor, but then, you know, things weren't working out, so they, they ended up moving upstairs because they felt that location uh, would be better. So, in this case, I actually don't want to edit or update the name in the description of this Foot Locker record because that's going to remain the same, um, but the location is what I want to change. So, what I can actually do is I can go into this name in my inputs because I don't want to um, change anything. This window opens up. I can toggle this right here that says hide this input and I can make it hidden from my API. I can hit save and then I can do the same exact thing to the description because I want to leave that as is. So I'll open that window, I'll make this hidden from the API, click save, and then there's one additional step that might not be as obvious but I need to go into the function stack and match my inputs uh, up with my function stack now that I've changed some things around. So I just click on this blue bar where it says edit record and I'm going to scroll down where these inputs are actually mapped and I can hover over this box to the left and just hide it and do the same with um, the description as I just did with name and click on this little eye icon to hide that from uh, my function from that inner working remember and now I'll hit save and now that that's all good to go I can actually edit my store record so right here we see there's no quotations for this ID because it's an integer. So I just need to delete this zero and type in four because that's Foot Locker, that's the new one. And because we're not worried about name and description, I actually don't have to do anything with those. I can leave those be. And I do want to update or edit this location though. So remember, in between these quotation marks, and now I'm going to say uh, Foot Locker moved to level two and unit C. So I can go ahead and run this and here we go it says everything ran successfully so remember we left in uh, Foot Locker the name and the description footwear uh, just the same we hid that from this API endpoint so those were unchanged but that location was updated remember it was at 1B now it's at 2C and I will go back into my uh, database table stores and show that to you see that that was updated yep Okay, so one last operator for uh, CRUD, which is delete. So as you would imagine, delete is going to correspond with this delete verb, this red verb, and you will see that it has um, ID right here. And that's because the API needs to know exactly which row, exactly which record to go to in order to delete it. So the only input it needs is just that ID. 
Um, that inner workings, the function stack, is just delete record. And the response, um, as I mentioned before, the response is optional, so we won't have a response with this delete operator because it's just removing a record or deleting a record. We don't need to know anything back. So I can go up into this run and debug, and let's just say things weren't working out for Foot Locker even after the move. They just couldn't get a, a hold. So I'll type in ID4. I'll go ahead and run that, and it says everything ran successfully. The result says null because we didn't have a response. And I'll go back into my database table one more time just to show you uh, what happened with Foot Locker and it's been removed from my database table. Okay, and now I'll just take us back to the dashboard so we can get back to our home base. Um, I've already shown you in the previous video how to set up your backend, how to add content to your database table. And from there, you were already uh, ready to connect it to a front end. This video I just highlighted and explained what those CRUD API endpoints are so I can show you you know how that data for our shopping mall gets sent through the API. Um, so right now once again you're still ready to connect it to a front end if you have these CRUD API endpoints set up. If you're a complete beginner I recommend you do that. Um, explore and play around in your application with with CRUD and then you know, if you need to do some customization, continue watching because in the next video, I'm going to uh, not only talk about add-ons, but also show you how to do a marketplace extension and implement it into your project.